Some of the sellers on eBay are not particularly noted for their honesty in giving the correct capacity of their batteries, mainly because they want to sell them in preference to the people who are listing similar products. So they just nudge the figures up a little bit, or in this case, quite a large bit. And it's not as bad as it used to be. Um, I found this listing when I went looking for it, uh, which listed um, a little pack of four cells, two AA at 3,000 milliamp hour and two AAA at 1,800 milliamp hour for a mere £1.46 shipped. And um, that's not bad because they used to sell the AA cells with ridiculous figures. It was almost like as big a number as they could fit in. It was like 100,000 milliamp hour. And you do get, they seem to be playing more sensibly now because uh, you do get 3,000 milliamp hour uh, nickel metal hydride cells, but the more common ones are around about, say this one is 2,500 milliamp hour because they want, to make the really high capacity ones, they have to cheat the extra chemistry in and, you know, thin down the separators and nudge the size of the case up a tiny wee bit just to push the limits to get that extra capacity. And that's not what they've done here. Likewise, um, the AAA, I was under the impression the maximum capacity at the moment is round about 1,000 milliamp hour. So 1,800 milliamp hour is somewhat generous. Um, it's worth mentioning that uh, things like you get different styles of nickel metal hydride cells. They, by compromising on the capacity, they can add extra features. The end loop is quite notable for that in that uh, they claim a very high number of charge discharge cycles and also the self uh, discharge of these cells is extremely low as opposed to say for instance this one which is going more for capacity uh, and doesn't have that sort of low self discharge feature. However, weight of these is the first clue that there's something amiss. Let's weigh one of the double A's. So here's a 2,500 milliamp hour cell, wait for the scales to stabilize. Um, and it's about 27 and a half grams. This 3,000 milliamp hour cell weighs 13 grams. So considerably lighter. Let's say I just weigh the inner loop out of interest. Is it much difference from the, it's close to the original one, the uh, other battery. But um, it gets a bit worse when you uh, put them on a charger. I put them on a smart charger and I did a few charge and discharge cycles on them and monitored the capacity on each cycle. And the little cells here, the ones that are supposed to be rated 1,800 milliamp hour, came at a staggering 150 milliamp hour. And one of them didn't even make that. One of them actually struggled to make 130 milliamp hour. So even compared to the little batteries you get, you know, supplied in solar lights, these are quite crap. Uh, these, are, however, on the other hand, these 3,000 milliamp hour didn't even make a tenth of their rating. I, I was expecting them to be like the standard solar lantern batteries where it's roughly 300 milliamp hour or 600 milliamp hour. But these ones came in at 200 milliamp hour. So um, I wonder how many people buy these. And then, well, obviously you see all the feedback going, oh, yes, these batteries are great, big thumbs up and all that. They've obviously not really tested them much. They've probably put them in an appliance and it's started running and then they've said, oh, that's it, fine then. They've got super high capacity and they've not actually considered how long it's actually running for. But yes, uh, so that's the current state. They're still, still selling the bogus values, but at least they're using sensible figures, albeit that they're well over 10 times the actual capacity of the cells. The video really wouldn't be complete if I didn't open this, would it? So, um, Here's the plan. I'm going to uh, either, I'm going to try and nibble my way in with my snips as I usually do. I've got a pipe cutter, a small pipe cutter as a backup plan. I have discharged this cell mostly. Uh, I think we should just uh, get straight into it. So uh, let's uh, zoom in on this so you can see the exciting flames action if everything goes horribly wrong. So I'm going to slit round here with the knife and slit the end off. I don't know if I really need to do this, but I'm going to do it anyway. Heat shrink. Then I'm going to slip the blade in here and remove the little white disc. Then uh, I'm going to tentatively short this out and see what happens. Is it getting warm? It's not really getting warm. Okay, let's continue. So let's uh, nibble in like this. This is crimped round in the end. It's a sort of, basically the, the end of that, the tube is closed. 
And they put the positive electrode in and a sort of plastic gasket. Oh. Oh, now the heat now all the heat shrink's coming off. Uh, it's it's full in a way. Uh, is that just packer? Is this dangerous electrolyte? Should I be putting gloves on for this? Probably. I'm not sure what the electrolyte is in nickel uh, metal hydride cells. Presumably it's some sort of, well, it is quite damaging to electronic stuff when it leaks. Uh, is this going to come out? Uh, where am I? Long nose pliers. Oh, here it comes. Here it comes. No, it's not coming. Yes, it is coming. Oh, it's quite tight. Smutty double entendres. Um, can I peel this a little bit further? It seems almost to be wedged in tight against the side. I suppose ultimately that is how they... Uh, how they make contact with the negative side with whatever pace that is. It is kind of wet. It's not really that wet. It's kind of moist. Oh no, another smutty reference. Ooh, here we go. That has a liquid on it which is probably going to be un unpleasant to skin. Let's uh, contrast this down a bit and focus in. So let's uh, Cut the contrast down and just focus down round about there. And uh, pull this apart. So I've got a mesh here. Gonna have to wash my hands after this. They have just uh, used a, an abbreviated quantity and just rolled it up and then sort of it's wound out against the side of the case. So we've got uh, the electro the separator here. We've got this mesh which is caked with one chemical. Not sure what that is. I think I shall wash my hands shortly. And then this perforated mesh caked with the other chemical. Um, and the separator between them, this uh, sort of paper-like substance that's quite fibrous. It's quite thick, actually. Right, uh, so that's what's inside. It's kind of, they've filled it up to a degree. It's not like super full up. But they've just kind of wound it as an outer barrel around the outside of the uh, the shell as opposed to filling it up to the, the brim, you know, and compressing that into a really tight core inside. So, um, interesting. It's, I, th I was expecting a smaller cell just hidden inside, but all they've done is compromise the amount of materials. But that's what's inside these knockoff cells.